Welcome to the Millbrook Railroad. You may notice we have a turntable over here. It's not fully in yet. We still have to put the lead tracks to it, as is obvious by lack of tracks going to it or from it. It might not happen this year. The winter is fast approaching. But there have been some comments about it. So I thought I'd mention it. This turntable came from Canada. A friend of mine had a railway up in Canada about an hour north of Montreal and uh, he was getting out of this size railroading and going into G-gauge railroading. And I had gotten out of G-gauge railroading years before and had a bunch of old G-gauge equipment laying around. So we made a trade. I'm glad I did. I enjoy this a lot better than I did the G-gauge. And the price of the track, at least at the time, was nearly the same. Of course, the stone underneath the track is a bit more expensive. But only by a few cents a yard. So the price is very, very close. But whoever built a thousand feet of G-gauge? <laughs> That's what this stuff is for, building long stretches. But anyway, the turntable is intended to turn around a snowplow and anything else we want to turn around, locomotives, cars. There, uh, there is supposed to be a lead track coming from the main line over there, going into the turntable and then two tracks coming out of the turntable going into the basement behind me. Uh, the house is very much unfinished. We are living in it, but it's still unfinished. We have two tracks going into the garage, and let me get this thing off the tripod so I can show you. There's the two tracks in the basement floor. So I laid those down before the concrete was poured, and I knew I wanted tracks in the basement floor. So I could just roll trains in and out, and that'll happen probably next year. It's a little ambitious to try to do it this year. I've got a lot of other things I've got to do, like uh, hook up the rest of the heating system. Right now, the entire house over 3,000 square feet with a walk-in attic and this is the short end of the house anyway it's all heated by this one thing a used pellet stove so that it, that one pellet stove is what keeps this railroad so busy all winter long. So we have our wood pellet storage in this building right here. And in the middle of the winter, it's really hard to drive down here. So this is the most, this is the area that makes the most sense. I apologize for the mess. It is a mess in here, but well, at least I have enough room in here for a ton of wood pellets. I'll be cleaning this out some more so I have room for two tons of wood pellets so that I, I can go a month without without uh, having to run another pellet train. Or, I don't know. Maybe I should just keep it the way it is. It's more interesting that way for you guys. A little bit of a hassle for me, but uh, oh well. So there you go. That's the story of the turntable. Came from Canada, brought it down here in an old 66 F-250 with hardly any brakes in December. Another moment I questioned my sanity, for real. <laughs> but it was a get-her-done moment, a very long get-her-done moment. So 
So, funny thing, when I came back uh, across the border, the uh, U.S. Border Patrol agent at the border says, uh, Oh, I know you. <laughs> You've got that railroad down in Windsor. I said, Yep. <laughs> so, and he knew it because you can see the railroad right from the road. Uh, you've probably noticed that. That there are cars that go by in a lot of my videos. We're right next to a state highway. The sun is finally coming through the fog here this morning. So there you go, that's the story of the turntable. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next video.